No, we looked at just how engaging Avatar was, and we were inspired to have something so ambitious, something so story-driven, something so fun to watch and engaging. And if we can just achieve a fraction of that feeling, I think we'll be, we'll be very happy. Now, you're gonna notice a ton of differences, obviously, but it's just, it's more about the ambition of the world building and the ambition of the story and the dialogue and like the seriousness with which we took the subject. So I grew up watching Avatar, The Last Airbender, when it was airing, and it was a new type of show, unlike anything they did before, kind of unlike anything they've done since. It was a serialized adventure. Most TV shows for kids are comedies that are the sitcom format every week. There's something different going on. Avatar was really clever in that it kind of played to both strengths of both types, because they had lots of episodes that you could technically call filler episodes, but they're very character driven. They help build the, the world and things like that. And so they didn't really feel like filler. So you get the excitement of something new every week, plus a serialized adventure that's going all sorts of places, really exciting storylines that you have to see what happens next. It took a while before we got my dad, Dave, to watch it. But once he did, he was pretty quickly hooked on it because it's just such a great show with great characters and amazing world building. We just love that type of show. I feel like there needs to be more of that kind of thing. Serialized adventures for kids, but everyone can enjoy. Yeah, they went to show it to me and I was pretty sure I wouldn't like it. But it only took a few episodes where I thought, oh, actually, this is more than a kids show. There's some depth here. Like, there's something meaningful about the characters and the story and then the way they had so much time i guess with so many episodes to really develop the characters and pretty soon you just you just are really connected to the characters just really loving the characters and you know you see zuko go back and forth with his loyalties and stuff and it's just really pulls on it it's it's, it's very impactful and when we were showing my dad avatar i think what we loved about this show was that the writing wasn't kind of dumbed down, really. A lot of the jokes and humor was stuff kids could laugh at, but the overall story, the arc of the whole show and arc of these seasons, it wasn't dumbed down at all. It was really, really interesting, really well done. We love the idea of that kind of story where kids aren't unable to comprehend interesting storylines that have lots of complex moving parts and lots of difference elements and people so we really wanted to incorporate something like that into our show where there is this larger structure in the world and lots of different people's different motivations and uh, eventually hope to you know, build it up over the course of many episodes and seasons to something that you know is going to be really interesting complex something that adults and kids would both love a comparison i drew with ang and with six as well which is when you first meet six there's like a silliness there there's and that's the tone of the show is very similar where hey like there's some some silly gags and fun and six is having fun but then you have the fire nation show up and it's turning into a, a physical conflict wake my uncle tell him i found the avatar here you have six who's fun and kind of peaceful and ang is this thing that the they're both trying to get, right? Like this other culture coming in, they're busted through the town to get what? They're looking for six, mm -hmm. just like the, the Fire Nation is looking for the Avatar. And I felt like those comparisons were pretty strong. The only difference is that six can't fight back. So the Avatar is better at fighting them than Sokka and Katara are. But uh, with six, you know, you're not gonna get any help. He's just like a little baby. You know, with Pearl, you can see a connection potentially with Katara. You, you really get the sense that she's very honorable and she's she's someone who cares a lot. You know, you can kind of count on her to make the right choice. Like Aang is kind of like being silly and maybe being impulsive and Sokka is being self-interested and you can count on Katara being the one to say, hey guys, this is the right thing to do. It's sort of like the caring, like maybe mother figure for the heroes. And for Pearl, you know, some of those similar qualities where she's someone who really cares and she's someone that has a strong moral compass and you can kind of count on that. Katara is this character who has a great maternal instinct born from her upbringing and the responsibilities voiced upon her. And it was really fun to see how that manifests throughout the show. And so with Pearl, it's the way she wants to instantly take care of Six, want a character who's this Pied Piper of mechs. So it made sense that she instantly is, is attached to Six. 
and when she sees he's he's got this curiosity to him, this 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 li liveliness and this potential, and that he's you know in danger, this some maternal aspect of her character definitely kicks in. Episode one, you see a little bit of Casey. So he's a salesman. You get the feeling that he's a little shallow and a little self-interested because he you know runs away when the when the bandits show up. You know, you kind of get a sense for what kind of person he is. He compares uh, pretty well with Sokka. You know, Sokka is a little bit self-interested. He's the one that's maybe a little more selfish. Is like, no, we're gonna, we need to look out for ourselves. And he's the, like the protector, right? So he has to be a little more selfish. Care for some meat? Would I? When you have a character who is really kind of self-important or they're, they're really trying to look their best there's something funny about just kind of kicking them down and, <laughs> and making them look silly. So uh, with Sokka, it's that way, especially at the beginning of the show, because he's, he tries to take himself so seriously, but he's really kind of just a klutzy. You know, he's trying to take this this role on himself of being a protector of the village, but he's just a kid. He's kind of had no experience. And so it's funny to, to kind of poke fun at him. Um, and that obviously that leads to him having a great arc throughout the show. To, you know, become more useful um, and be less self-serious and self-important. And so I think that's why Casey became kind of a funny butt of the joke. He's, he's, he's sort of playing fast and loose with the truth and stuff to present things the best they can be, uh, present himself. And it just seems so insincere sometimes. So it's kind of, it's funny to make him the butt of the joke. Appa and Casey's cart how they get places. So Casey's cart and Skip, I guess together, really. Yeah. So Skip, you don't meet in the first episode, but uh, you find out that he drives uh, Casey's cart around. Casey's cart is his little sales unit, his sales car, where he keeps uh, wares and things he sells. And it's designed to be pedaled by a little mech that sits in the front. And so he steers it and he pedals it. You're going to meet him later, but he's funny. He's, he's grumpy and he's super, super fun. So Appa is the one that gets Aang and the gang around. I don't know why, but he's he's just so dang likable. And yeah, if you look at Casey's cart and who we're about to meet, Skip, you kind of have a similar feeling of, although he's the one that's going to get us there and uh, he's a lot of fun. If you look at the character of Momo, I think there's a comparison there with Outhouse Helper because uh, <laughs> hear me out because uh, it's like sort of like a cute non-verbal you know character that uh, can make maybe a little squeak sound, but is just uh, cute and is introduced at the right time to punctuate something funny. So we have at the end of Reed's speech in the town after the attack where Outhouse Helper wants revenge. And so he's been smashed up, he's been fixed up. And in Avatar, when you have Momo come in, a lot of times it's for that cuteness factor and for that fun. We've been tricked! Was well, something that's similar to the Avatar is the Four Nations, right? So we have Meridian, which is sort of like America, but a little different. The mechs in Meridian, they have rudimentary tasks that they're given to clean things, to to um, straighten things, wash things, shovel the poop, take you toilet paper, that kind of thing. So it's, it's very simplistic tasks. And then we have Paraj, which is basically like a another desert culture, this from the Middle Eastern inspired world and from the ancient world, and then brought in right next to these sort of American cowboys. Thought that would be a really cool like tension. And then have them not ever really talk to each other. So there's a lot of mistrust in Paraj we learn later that the mechs are more advanced, more detailed, they're more sleek, they're more beautiful, and just uh, smarter. And then we have the Shioni, which is uh, sort of the Native American inspired culture. In Shioni, the mechs don't really have a function in terms of what we'd normally think, but they have function as art. They're, they're built to be beautiful and to replicate nature in that way. And then we have Tolmeca, which is inspired by Mexico. Their mechs are more agricultural based, and so their society has a lot of advancements based on that. We worked a lot on, you know, how are these mechs different from each other? Shows like Avatar and what we're hoping to do with Mech West, there's like a depth there where I think we're asking more of the audience, you know, than just a quick laugh. It's like, 
there's, there's depth, there's, there's time it takes to develop a story and the characters. And we're hoping people will, will get into that and that fun of really diving deep into the world. We developed this really detailed world. Wait till you get to, you know, episode three, four, five and, and, and on. I think once we have things that set up, we can do things that are more interesting, more fun and get deeper into the, the world where we see not just the other cultures, but the other towns and how their mechs are. You really get the sense and the feeling watching Avatar that there's just a lot of lore. And Avatar has clearly delineated lines with their nations where there are nations based on each of these these four elements. That obviously led to lots of great storylines and a great way to bring out kind of like these the strengths of each of these nations, which led to interesting stories. When we thought about how we could show different types of mechs in this world, great idea I think we had was uh, let's have each each culture can can use mechs differently. And that could be one of the interesting questions to follow throughout the show is how does each culture view mechs? What kind of mechs do they make? Uh, so that's why it was it's interesting to see Meridian's mechs, the kind that they make, uh, the way they treat them. It's going to be super different from uh, what the Shayuni do, from uh, what the Tolmecans do and Faraji. It gives so much potential opportunities for stories. We introduce new characters and new situations, new mechs. We have all sorts of exciting things going on with the mechs where uh, we find out that some of them aren't well cared for and so they're just out in the wild and they just find their own coal and they kind of like fix each other. So there's just all kinds of fun places we take it that uh, we can't wait to, to show you guys. We like that idea that there is a multi-season long uh, arc that we're, we're going to establish in this first season and follow throughout uh, all the seasons. Right now, we have kind of six short seasons that we want to, to do full for the show, and we have so much more that we want to do. So we're really excited for what the future can bring for MechWest. Even beyond what we've planned, there's so much potential, so many stories, so much depth and, and twists that we can bring in for, for our show down the line, much like Avatar did. We're, we're taking it very seriously in MechWest, and those are the things that we were inspired by most of all from Avatar. 